Hey guys, um, what a difficult, different year. And I gotta tell you, Chris and Mary, thank you again for figuring out how to do this. Cause you know, it's been 13 years since we started. And uh, Chris, remember that first one when we had only like 19 people? And I'm sure you were going, oh my goodness, what did I do? So anyway, my name's Ted Plemons, one of the owners of Cass Winery. Um, just here to uh, celebrate the fact that we get to do this. And uh, I, I love the menu, Chef Greg's, Greg's done a great job. Uh, we're gonna talk about three wines, but I, I like to talk about the little bit of history of Cass first, only because it sort of sets up the wine style. Um, my partner, Steve Cass, and him, I, we met in 1999, and he had retired from Schwab and wanted to plant a vineyard and just be a grower. Well, I, he hired me as a builder, been a building contractor in Paso Robles for about 40 plus years. And um, so I built the barn, which eventually became the winery and came in on time and under budget. And you know, that people love that. So we became really good friends. And uh, I convinced him that I might be a good partner. So August 02, there's, there's this event here every summer called the Hospice to Rome. Rome producers come in from all over the world and have a like a three, four day event. Um, Steve and I, uh, well, Steve purchased a barrel of South African wine um, at a blind auction. And it was incredible. We drank the heck out of it. We got a hold of that winemaker, a guy named Charles Back, Fairview Winery, Parle, South Africa. And in January 03, him and I were there for a month as guests of his, but also we'd play golf in the morning and they go to drink wine. And what I kept hearing that whole time I was there was old world. I remember standing in 17th century Dutch buildings with concrete vats in the ground still being used for fermentation. And it, what it, how it translated that whole month to me was, was vineyard driven wines. You know, and me growing up in Paso Robles, I know what the other people are doing. I know about ripeness in oak. Well. The last week in the trip, we're sitting in Stalabash, and he, Steve says we were drinking Syrah. No, we were get, we were ripped on Syrah. And I go, partner, let's open a winery. And it was just like this, guys. The birth of Cass. Well, all that being said, so the wines that we wanted to, and, we, and you know, right then we talked about the wine style, and what we wanted to do was become a pastoral's winery that was gonna let the vineyard make the wines. We brought uh, Lewid Kutsi over for the first 10 years, made our wines, set the style. Uh, and some of you're going to taste this throughout the wines. You're going to taste more of what the vineyard and the terroir has to do with it versus what we can embellish it to. Um, so we started the winery. We took 05, we opened. Oh, golly, I remember those early years when the big recession hit, you know, and we had just started, no one knew us, but we grew at 20% a year thanks to people like Chris and Mary. So guys, I'm really excited about the first wine I wanna to talk to you about. Uh, one of the things that we did with this vineyard that Steve was very smart, it was the first Antov clones out of France that were uh, in California in 1999. I don't remember how to pronounce the word, but it's about that big, but it's an acronym is Antov. Well, what that means is, first of all, we know the clone that we have, so a lot of Roan cuttings came over in suitcases. Well, it turned out people didn't have what they thought they had. So we know what we have, which is very helpful. But also there's a ripeness thing. They go through seven years and they pull out plants that ripen too early and too late. So when I want to pick at a certain brick sugar, around 24.5, I'm getting 23 and 25.5, not 19 and 30. Very consistent. So let's get, everyone pour a little bit of this Roussan and notice the beautiful color. Uh, this wine, of course, is primarily free run, meaning there's really no pressed juice on it at all. And it's stainless steel, fermented, very cold stainless fermentation. Um, let's all take a sip. And what I liked about the pairing, especially with the lemongrass chicken skewers, is you get that little citrus off the side of the tongue. Well, it's a characteristic of a Roussan. It's gonna pair incredible of course the scallops with the garlic cream sauce again there's enough acidity in this to cut through that cream sauce and they're really going to pair wonderfully so we do have a viognier which is one of our rock stars Roussan. i am going to call this 19 Roussan probably one of the best white wines that we've made 
and uh, I'm very proud of it. So, so guys, enjoy the Roussan, and uh, we're gonna move on to the next course. So here we are, guys. Uh, I always like to, you know, I like to tell more stories than get real technical. That's just how we roll. So I moved about 40 feet. We're standing in this building. It's called the Cast Barrel Room. It turns out that it's a it's an event center. And after I, we drink some Moved, Moved, we're gonna take a little walk through the kitchen. But anyway, so I got a little quick story. So Steve comes to me about six years ago and he goes, you know, I was back east, I think we need to build an event space. I go, really? Because I knew that I'd have to build it. Yeah, he goes, and I wanna hook a B&B &B to it. Really, partner? And he goes, I want the B&Bs to be built out of containers. I go, really? Well, here we are standing in the event center, but one quick little story. So it, it finished last June. So my daughter was the first wedding here. So on, she came about a month before it was finished. And when she left, she goes, Dad, don't make it look like a construction site, of course. So on a Thursday, first part of June, first of June, I got a final. And then the next Saturday was her wedding. So again, no pressure. Took me about three weeks to recover, but we did survive. Had 184 people here. So anyway, I'm standing in the new event center and um, we're so blessed. And, and there's gonna be a little thing coming at the end that's gonna get more into the containers. But I gotta tell you guys, it took six years for us to get, first of all, design it to get permission. I had to train the county, but now we're done. And think about it, you can come up and it's called the Geneseo Win and it's worth it because the breakfast is to die for. I stayed in every one of them when I finished them, mainly for the breakfast, but also I wanted to make sure the showers worked. But So Movedra, and as Chris will know, that we probably always pick this every year, this in Grenache. Um, I'm a Moved freak, so we're probably one of the, we're the Moved House of Paso, a very quick little side note. There's an event here going on every year called the uh, Central Coast Wine Competition. Well, Steve and I never joined it, but in, it's been going on for like 20 years. So in 15, Sterling goes, let's enter the Central Coast Wine Competition. We go, okay, well, we won, which is probably unheard of. And then we can't win it consecutive years. So we went into 18 and joined it again. Well, we won again. No wine did ever win twice. And where I'm going with this, the red wine that won best red wine out of 700 reds was our Movedra, our 16. Tonight we're drinking the 18, so everybody pour some Movedra. Let's have a sip. You know, if you look at it more in color, it looks more Pinot-like, if you will. How I like to describe this wine, it's our vineyard in a glass. Basically, there's nothing we do to this, but we farm it very well. And we put it on very, very neutral barrels, meaning a barrel that's not gonna add any influence to the wine at all. You know, the French call this wine earth with pepper. And me being a Moved freak, I like to collect them and buy them every time I see one, cook with half of them, throw some of them away because they over ripen it. The thing about over ripeness is it gets very tarry. You don't lose have earth, but then you lose the pepper. And if you put big new wood on it, the pepper becomes wood. So again, no embellishment, neutral barrels. And uh, it's it's one of our rock stars. and. A little story back in 05, I was telling Lewitt and Steve, I go, let's make 100% Movedra. And they go, oh, it'll never sell. Well, guess what? This is our biggest selling wine. And we're truly now, there's probably six wines at Cass that are Moved based. Cause we do, we have a separate Moved tasting just for Movedra. So guy, the pairings, the, the, sh the, sh the short ribs and the um, mushrooms. Anytime you put a mushroom dish with a Movedra, it's going to be paradise. So guys, it's going to pair beautiful with both. Let's take another sip. 2018 Cas Movedra. Thank you very much. We're going to move over here. I want to I want to take you guys behind the back into the back and sort of see the capability of this new building that we built. And we have a wine dinner tonight, so you're going to see a working kitchen. <laughs> So guys, I want everybody to smile because we're uh, we're doing a little uh, virtual wine dinner, not for a competition. Sounds good. Sounds 
good. We'll let you stay for a little So anyway, while. Chris, eat your heart out, brother. So, okay, we're going to head down and drink some rock and one down in the library, guys. You know what's really fun? I got to drive down from the event center down. Now I'm in the library at the existing winery. Wow. So another little story, which I love to tell. So Steve and I, and we, I put a commercial kitchen in the existing winery uh, right up front just to do wine dinners. Well, it's funny, Steve was in uh, Australia in 2007 because Brian, his son, was getting his master's in wine business in Adelaide, Australia. So he's there in December. So he goes there, you know, December down there is their summer. And he, he, he went, wow, wineries seem to have food. We're very, very busy. You know, it's a little hard to drink red wine while it's 100 degrees, for God's sake. But anyway, so he comes back all fired up and he goes, we're going to, let's use our kitchen. Let's start serving, get a chef and serve food, which no winery at that time was doing. They were buying jacuterie made up in plastic bags and things like that. So guess what Cass did? We started making food for lunches every day. Um, my God, my goodness, guys, what's happened over the years. Uh, we are now a restaurant, if we choose. Uh, I raised my own beef on the ranch. All the beef here is all raised on the ranch. We have our own gardens, our own chickens, our own ducks. So again, it's another way to compliment the wines that you've been drinking. And have you guys sensed that, aren't they very more elegant? Well, wine we're gonna taste here would be the Rockin' One Red. Um, everybody pour some, let's have a sip. This is really our premier run blend. And again, what you're gonna get on this wine, get the elegance. So for, remember the Movedo we had was more of a, on neutral barrels, uh, unembellished. Well, so was the Grenache. Now, usually we do the Grenache at these dinners, but we're out of it. I gotta stop drinking it all for God's sake. But anyway, so it's Movedo Grenache primarily. So that's, those being in neutral barrels, unembellished. So we have to be careful about the Syrah. So I think there's only 15% Syrah in this because it would overwhelm it. But then we put a little bit of Petite in the back side of this, Petite Syrah, mainly just to give it cellar. Because what's fun about cast wines, and we're, I'm still drinking eight and nines of this, which puts it about 11 years old because the wine's not being overripe, meaning over alcoholic as the fruit dissipates alcohol is ever present well ours are made to sell longer because of the balance so again Movedra Grenache Sarad Petit that's our premier Rome blend 17 sort of reminds me of another story we had wanted to buy a machine for many years it's called an optical sorter well we didn't want to pay for it you know it cost around a hundred thousand dollars so in 17, we bought one and it went online for that vintage. And I, I got to give you a little quick story about, let's talk about harvest. So here you go. You've got a tractor with a trailer with four half, three half ton bins. And on those sideboards are four people trying to pick out everything they can that's not a grape. But in the meantime, they got 11 people dumping 40 pounds of grapes over them into the bins. It's a sticky pandemonium which is actually pretty cool, you know, anyway. So here they are trying to pick everything that's not a grape. They come to the winery, we drop the bins off. We, as they go up to the stimmer, we try to hand sort, again, what we can that's not a grape. Well, there's a couple things embedded in a bunch of grape you can't hand sort. One of them is called a uh, shot berry, which is green, an uh, unripened berry green. The other one's called a blackjack. It looks like a clove, bitter. So these, for all the years we've been making wine, have gone into fermentation. And thank God for fermentation. But now what happens, they drop out of the stimmer onto this machine, and the first thing that are gone are the shot berries and the black jacks. We get about a five gallon bucket per half ton. But the most interesting part about it is they go down this conveyor, as they drop off into the bin, there's a series of cameras that are tied to a computer. Now, Sterling and I, we had to program in bird shit, bat wings, earwigs, anything that's not a grape. So when it senses that it's not a grape, it blows air and blows it off of the grape. So now we're about 98% pure grape before it goes into fermentation. Um, again, another little incremental 
you know, like Steve and I said, let's make the best possible wine that we can out of this vineyard. Well, this is another step in that process. It's been 20 years now. Uh, I used to say we, we'd sell every bottle that we don't drink, but we make 22,000 cases. I can't drink that much. But because of you guys and Chris and Mary and people like you, you're helping us save our drinking problem, for God's sake. But anyway, so the Rockin' One Red, I think will pair beautifully with, with, with also the, the mushroom and the braised short rib, but the cassoulet, this, the acidity in this will just be wonderful. So guys, I'm going to end it here and say, Chris and Mary, thank you. Wish I was doing this real time, but I hope that this sort of gets you what we wanted to do. Mainly we want to be in front of you. We want you to buy some of this wine. You know, wine we have, money we need, for God's sake. But anyway, thanks again, and uh, I'll see you in person next year. How's that? So I'm going to end this with, uh, we're going to do a little little uh, clip about Cass, which is going to sort of give you an overview of the whole ranch, because what we've created here at Cass, besides great wine, is an experience. And I'm going to give you guys a little news flash. 2021, think about it. The only swim up wine bar in California, but you're going to have to swim into a container. I'm going to leave it right there. Thank you very much, guys. I worked at Charles Schwab for a long time. I was there for about 20 years. Uh, started off on the option trading desk uh, in, um, in San Francisco. They moved me to Chicago for a little while, and then to New York, and then back. But after about 15 or 16 years, I had always had an interest in having my own business. My dad, a couple times, had expressed a desire. He never had his own business, but he always had a desire for it. And I remember when I was a kid one time, he said, I always wanted to have a restaurant where the kitchen was upstairs and there would be a fire pole where the waiters would come down the fire pole with the food up on their shoulder. <laughs> We took a trip to South Africa in 03, and there we decided to have a winery and I became his partner because we wanted to make a old world style California wine. Well, we were ripped on Syrah one night in Stalinbosch, South Africa, and uh, he says we were drinking, no, we were ripped. And I go, partner, let's start a winery. And it, just like that, very Syrah-induced decision. <laughs> I came down here with my wife uh, in 1999, just thinking about a vacation home. You know, this was 700 acres of ground squirrels and weeds in 1999. I asked a friend of mine, what do you know about Paso Robles? And he said, well, there's a nice lake there. We used to go water skiing there when we were kids. And it, this person didn't even mention, you know, the vineyards or the winery or anything. So I met Steve at the gate, the interview to build the barn, which is now our winery. And I came in on time and under budget, which is unheard of. I always say that's really bitching. So his vision, retired from Schwab, was to start a vineyard and be a grower. Well, I convinced him that I would be a good partner. And that started it. Some people refer to wine as, well, it's a, you know, it's an art, but then there's a lot of science behind it too. And so I will kind of use the science as, as a little bit of guide, but ultimately, yeah, it does come down to taste. The vine will tell you everything you need to know. You have to be in the field, you have to be looking at the vine, you have to know what that vine needs and find a way to give that vine what they need. We will do multiple picks off of a block, ferment it, and each one of those is gonna taste differently. And then each barrel is gonna taste slightly different. And so it's by going through and choosing each barrel or each lot of wine, I can uh, hopefully create more of a natural balance when it comes to the final blend.
want your goal in the vineyard is to have continuity. So if you can get more evening ripening, you're gonna get a better result. Um, we're also using shade cloth, which allows us to shade um, the afternoon side so that we're getting the morning sun to ripen, but we're not getting the burning on the, after the hot afternoon sun. That is a technique that really is not used um, unless you're one of the higher class wineries, which Cass is. So we're not allowed to have a hotel here. The nearest hotel is about six miles away, but we are allowed to have a B&B. &B. My partner came to me and goes, you know, we're gonna build an event center, which is where we're sitting, and then I wanna do a B&B and let's make them out of containers. We wanted the uh, place where people would stay to uh, have some uh, punch to it, some, um, something memorable. But then we hired a young uh, a man in, in uh, Los Angeles that's an expert at doing these. And you remember uh, Doc Brown? Doc Brown with the crazy white hair and the uh, totally unfocused but genius yet attitude, <laughs> uh, that's who we got. We put them up in the air, which even made it more difficult because of all the seismic issues and all the engineering. But if you would have set them on the ground, it would have been boring. I'm glad they're done, <laughs> but there's my heart and soul over there. I get asked that question quite a bit, what's my vision? And I have to say it's evolved. It was always just incremental growth. We thought if we could grow 20% a year, you know, in our lifetime, we'll have a pretty good sized business. Uh, then the, uh, we started doing weddings and, and private events. Uh, that's a, a way to get a group of people out to come out to the tasting room. You know, if they never taste your wine, they're never gonna like the wine, and they're never gonna join the wine club. You gotta get people to come out. We got horseback riding through Central Coast Trail Rides, and you come up out of the vineyard up on the, our, the, our properties are the hills, and it's beautiful. We started Doing the sunset ride uh, about a year and a half ago, and it is pretty much our most popular ride now. We're virtually full every single night that we're able to ride, um, weather permitting. I want this to be the best experience as an inn in California. We're getting more sustainable and more where we can take care of ourselves on our own land. So we're setting up for to have some people really enjoy the ranch. And the goal is to come and enjoy the ranch. And that's what it's all about. <laughs>